Hello everyone, Commander Jack here. Today, I'm going to end up doing ground battles. Last time we were on naval battles, did a couple of them, and I'm sorry for the sound issue. Apparently my game sounds are up and my mic was not boosted, so I felt like that the, the game sounds I was projecting to the recording was just drowning my voice out, so I believe I remedied that issue. Just had to boost my mic a little bit. Today, I'm doing tank battles and it's somewhat similar. You have three lives. I only have two tanks. I don't have a reserve, extra reserve tank. So I technically only have two lives. This one, last time you can see that I was shooting a lot with a machine gun and tanks. Some tanks have a machine gun, others have just one shelled cannons. It's a very easy to just one shot tanks if you hit them in the right spot. Other times they just won't die. I've shot a guy like 10 times point blank before and I just could not get that sweet spot where I took out his crew or his modules so there's always that, that's always fun few times I believe on this one are a little bit longer. I think more people enjoy the Navy because it's newer. When War Thunder started out as bare bones airplanes and tanks, now they have I believe over a thousand vehicles. I want to say 1500 but I could be wrong about that. I highly doubt that. That seems like a very large number. But they added in the Navy, and they added in the uh, helicopters too, which obviously, as I said, I haven't tried yet. They're very far down there. I played War Thunder when it first came out a long time ago for maybe a couple of hours. Then I went back into the War Daily series because at the time it was a lot better. Um, it's just my opinion that I believe War Daily really messed up for other things. There it's so unbalanced, not taken care of. They make a lot of questionable decisions with their uh, balance changes and stuff like that. And it's almost prevalent with hackers and dogs and stuff. I don't know how cool Thunder is because I don't believe I found any. There's definitely a lot of hackers in World of Tanks at least. Uh, World of Warships I actually do still enjoy quite heavily and I put a lot of time into that game. The weather effects. The weather's do, does have an effect on your tanks in this. The snow is slippery. You definitely slide around. Definitely can't find hills as you can see. That kind of sucked. I was hoping to take a high ground and be able to get an advantage for them. people. As I said, very easy to one shot people. And then the upper right is where you hit them at. Uh, they took out one of my crew, so I'm switching. I'm saying duck. Oh, this is not good. Yep. Once we crew dies, you have to switch around crew members, and that takes time and you can't move or do anything while that's happening. And my last reserve tank. There's also air battles in this one that work somewhat differently. I don't know the logistics of it, but you can start an air battle in the bottom where my fire suppression and all this stuff's at. There's planes, you can just select them. 
and the other team can then start in their battle as well. And you just go into the air and fight until you win the battle. This, I'm nailing him, but I'm just not hitting anything in for him. Oh, good. The enemy team has to get this now. They don't really need to get this back, otherwise, they're just not losing. They are already losing. Let me go for heal. Get ready to start at it and see if we can go. Might be able to make the thing up straight and not try and turn during it. If you turn, you lose all your mobility. I didn't up slide down here. Okay, good, we got it. See someone on our team starting their battle and I could throw them and the king gets a chance to throw them. Then the number is the two out of two, one out of one. That's how many planes you get in this battle. So if you die in the plane, that's it, that plane's done. Someone was on their way. Now the mini map it pops up with a lot of the enemies and stuff like that. If someone shoots an enemy, that's where machine guns come to play. Some tanks have machine guns and main cannons. If you tag someone and you have teammates that have been radio contact, they can relay the position back to like the teammates and stuff. Far shot, one kilometer. I need to go take zones, can't keep losing them. And one of the guys is suicide with me. Fantastic. You'll see that a lot too. People are literally just trying to die bomb for no reason at all. It is very difficult to actually dive bomb on the tank or ship. I tried it in both last ditch efforts when I'm going down. I don't think I've actually done it. I've had it actually. I've had to get a plane, land on one of my ships, and kill me. Got him. The gas crew. Very one-shotting. And 
and now they're back at A, taking A. zones and hold them, but a lot of people prefer combat. Uh-oh. Yep, I'm dead. They got a lucky ass shot off on me if they're going up through. I know there's two of them there. my last reserve tank. I need another Russian tank. I'm gonna be doing Russian line that way and have three lives. And I order another tank. Why am I researching rate two? I can't even use it if it gets researched. I'm gonna research a tank destroyer. Get that out there. Difference between these tanks. Uh, that sure don't have a medium tank in rank one. Dang. You're a Mizzou. So these six here are all light tanks. Usually they're faster. Uh, more maneuverable, but they have lighter t uh, armaments on them. Usually, either machine gun or just a small millimeter cannon. This one does have a 45 millimeter. Ooh, 76. That's actually a powerful one. And that one's a 20 millimeter cannon, so it's probably, considering it has a lot of ammo, it's probably an auto cannon has more shots, but it's a weaker gun itself. Tank destroyers usually have like no armor or very little armor, especially on the back side. But their cannons are massive. They have very heavy, strong hitting cannons. These are SBAAs. Their sole purpose is anti-air. You can use them to like shoot out of the tanks, but they probably like this one has a 7.62 millimeter cannon machine gun. Four of them. That's very weak. And they also have no hull armor or turret armor itself too. But they have very weak guns to tanks, but their sole purpose is just to take out planes. I don't really know why. War Thunder really put them in because I haven't found planes to be that difficult. Granted, if your planes can win, then it's great. But if they don't win, then I can see why anti air would be a necessity. I just kind of wish they did what uh, Wargaming did and actually put in artillery. RDs or SPGs, I believe they were abbreviated as. I actually enjoyed playing them on World of Tanks on the PC. Aiming with them sucked on console, but their main purpose was just to nuke other tanks from halfway across the map, which was actually pretty nice. A good arty would make or break a team. Bad. 
They don't have them in this. I don't even know if they have heavy tanks, do they? Oh yeah, they have heavy tanks in this. They don't have battleships in the fleet though, I don't think. They just have destroyer, light cruiser, and I believe a heavy cruiser. Don't know if Brush actually has heavy cruisers or not. They might. Yeah, they don't have battleships, which I found weird. Technically, when you unlock the artillery ability for ships, they kind of added in battleships. They're like, I guess they made it to where it's like you're calling in artillery support from a battleship. But I found it weird that they just didn't have battleships in here. They have uh, torpedo boats. Um... Oh, what's the other one? They have gunboats. They also have barges, which are like anti-air barges and stuff like that, which I found weird. Then they have light, dis uh, light cruiser, destroyer, and heavy cruiser, which I don't know what the difference between heavy cruiser and light cruiser would be. This is a different style of map. The last couple we played were capture three points and hold two of them to gain points. This one's just one point, so all we have to do is fight over one singular objective. And then, wait, here we went. And I'm poking it, I should not be up this far. Who shot me and knocked out my crew? I have a dead pinpoint on. Thank you. Uh oh. That's a good ram behind me, too. Also, when you're carrying your tank, you can't move. ammo. Hit another guy's ammo. That's why you also really don't want to carry full ammo racks. Uh, got just my teammates on that one. As you can see, I, I'll show you whenever I load in on the tank or whatever, but on, I'm not carrying full ammo. Because a full ammo rack is much easier to explode. So once, like, if it's a, not full, it has less ammo in it, I guess, and so you can actually get away with not 
having full sail. Because I only had 20 shots left. I took like half the passes. So I only started like 36 shells or something like that. Yeah, I've taken out two guys so far and just shooting them in the ammo. I think we have full ammo spots. I also don't expect you to come in from behind, too. There's no one this time where I can't freaking hit what I need to to take it out. I keep moving. I know that's something important to hear. We keep moving. Got him. Okay, we're good. Also, you'll notice that the crosshairs are turned different colors. Right now it's white, so I'm really targeted. Whenever it's red, that's an aim assist type deal. When it's red, it won't actually have much penetration or any at all. When it's green, that's where you want to shoot at, because it will have penetration. It doesn't always mean it's going to hit what you hit. It does mean that you have a better chance of getting through the tank's exterior armor. I believe in realistic battles, that's not on there. But I'm in arcade right now. I haven't actually tried realistic when we play arcade. Just easier, I guess. I wonder if you also to get more rewards in realistic. I don't know. There's also uh, simulated, I think it is. And that's my last show. I'm out. Also, so the downside to not bringing a full and the problem is that you can actually run out of ammo. That anyway, anyways, it's actually a really good match. Got 15 points. Hey, that's probably the best I've done. Easily the best I've done. Yeah, 3,000 research points. All these awards, dude, Jesus. Glad I caught that one on camera.
Now I got a modification for BT5. I got a lot of money and stuff for that one, dang. Yeah, I say that's a pretty good one to end the uh, video on. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and subscribe, hit thumbs up. And I'll hopefully see you all next time.